What's up, everybody? Welcome back to The Elevator Life. Guys, what's up? Hope you're having a good week. We're having a pretty good week so far. Pretty frustrating day today because some factory issues, some quality control issues, and it just really goes to show no matter how long you've been here, no matter how long you've been doing business here, doing business with a Chinese factory is not easy. <laughs> Couldn't be more spot on. Uh, communication is one of the most important factors when you're doing business in China. Um, you just got to be so clear with what you want, even if you are precisely 100% crystal clear, it just sometimes does not get across to their party. Um, confusion is a common theme here. Yeah, so, you know, we've talked about Alibaba before and everything and people sourcing from there and being upset. It even happens when you're here, even when your assistant goes to the factory, gives specific instructions, things still come back jumbled and all part of the learning process. We have a thick skin, just got to keep pushing forward. But one of the interesting things, so that's why you need someone here on the ground. Yeah. We're able to turn those mistakes around uh, on that on a daily basis. We we get the supply or the samples to our door, mm -hmm. and we're able to call the factory right then and there and let them know how they messed up. Yeah. Um, when you're dealing from your home country, there's time lag. The process is even more drawn out, and even more frustrating. Yeah, definitely. So for all you people who are sourcing out there, thinking about sourcing, definitely make sure you have someone here on the grounds. Definitely. Uh, inner China is going fantastic, guys. Our inner circle that we opened up about five days ago, uh, we couldn't be more happy with yeah. the people that we've got in there um, and the source that it's going to become for anyone that is doing business here in China. Uh, there's just no reason not to be a part of that if you are thinking or doing business here in China. Yeah. It's just really exciting. I mean, we have really high quality people in there from all all different countries, which has really made me, us excited. And then everybody from all different backgrounds as well. So yeah, excited to see how that grows because it's been, it's been less than a week and it's still, it's still, uh, it, it's just catching up speed and really exciting. In the last few days, we've been contacted by a few people that really wanted easy, quick advice about visiting China. Um, they, them themselves have actually visited China before and had made a few big mistakes. And so we wanted to talk about today, yes. the three don'ts for anyone that's visiting China. These aren't necessary for someone that is coming here and living, but if you're coming here to visit China, whether it be vacation, um, to see some friends or anything, yeah. these are three don'ts that right off the bat you should not do. Yeah, I mean, whether you're here for a week or whether you're here for a month, regardless of how long you're here, these three tips, piece of advice will definitely save you a lot of time and a lot of money. First off, and this was a mistake that uh, our contact had made, do not use an international calling plan from your provider back wherever you're coming from. Um, this guy used AT&T from the States and so he just thought it made sense to switch to the AT&T international plan. I'm gonna be in China for a week or two. Um, that is really, really expensive, especially if you're making a lot of calls um, just here in China. And it's really, really, really easy just to go into, we recommend China Unicom as your provider. They speak English in there. China Unicom stores are all over the place. Yeah. Super easy to find, you can find them online as well. Um, and just make that a priority day one. When you get here, go in there, get yourself a Chinese SIM card, and plop it into your phone. Yeah, whenever we have people visit or we host them, we always make sure day one, that's what they're doing. New cell phone, new plan. We have too many people visiting from, I mean, we've met them at wine shows, we've hosted them from the Elevator Life, and it's just the first week, if they don't do it, it's already up over $1,000. And mm -hmm. that's, you know, that's absolutely unnecessary because it could be easily under 100 for their whole trip as long as they do it smartly. Um, make sure your phone's unlocked. Yeah, make sure you have your phone jailbroken, unlocked, or we can we know how to do it here in China as well. China's a good place for that. Um, number two, do not take unsolicited advice or help. Um, not saying Chinese people uh, have bad intentions or negative intentions in your direction, but if it kind of seems like too good of an offer or it seems a little forced, definitely do not take it. And this is from the airport. When someone runs up to you and says, hey, taxi, 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 that's not a real taxi. If you show up and the car is black and there's no meter. It's good business, though. Yeah. Uh, they got to make a killing. Yeah, it's not a real taxi. They'll charge you two, three hundred, two, three, four hundred percent of what they should. Or if you're out shopping and people approach you, hey, are you looking for wallets or purses or what have you, counterfeit or real, that person gets a very large commission. Again, 200, 300 percent is the markup that they take directly from the supplier if they bring you customers up. We were a victim of that before as well when we were kind of feeling out the waters here in Guangzhou. That's just something you don't do. If it sounds a little, if it feels a little fishy, it definitely is. Funny thing about prices here in China is 
it could be two, three hundred, four hundred percent more, and it still seems like a good price to a lot of foreigners that are visiting here. Yeah. I remember my parents when they came to visit it. I would be like, "Hey, that's that's way, way ridiculous, exorbitant <laughs> price." Ah, yeah. oh, okay, it's okay. I think it's okay. Yeah. Okay. So that's really what it comes down to. Prices may seem good, but you're still getting taken. Uh, I think a good rule of thumb here in China: whenever you're in a taxi, just make sure they're using the meter. Then yeah. you know you're not getting uh, ripped off. Yeah, absolutely. That's a great one. Right? Yeah. I mean, always use a meter. Some of the people, even with foreigners that are here for the first time, they'll they'll push against not using the meter. Yeah. Oh, oh no, 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 can't use the meter. Can't use the meter. It's very simple. You just push the meter down, yeah. and then it will start to end. Getting taxis that look like taxis. Yeah, there you exactly. Go. Uh, last one: Do not eat Western food in a Chinese restaurant, and do not eat Chinese food in a Western restaurant. Um, you get the worst of both worlds when you're doing that, and uh, we have a lot of experience with that here. Yeah, we've had friends visit, and we'll go out for some Chinese food, and they'll say, "Hey, I really feel like a sandwich or a salad." And we'll say, "No, please. You know, if you want that, we'll go to a Western restaurant." No, no, no. I'll just eat with you guys. And what they say is a ham sandwich, or they say spaghetti is very far from it, and sometimes does not even have the ham or the spaghetti sauce in the dish you get. This will this will be very prevalent when you're outside of say Shanghai. Um, Shanghai's got a lot of Western shops all over the place, but when you're out of those and into the second tier of the cities, maybe even a lot of times in Guangzhou, you're you're gonna find a lot of shops that have set up and they look kind of like Western shops but they're owned by a Chinese and they're completely Chinese and the Western food follows suit. Yeah, they'll have Western names that are normally pretty comical, but you'll go in and it's all for the Chinese taste and obviously that's not for the foreign taste. Um, a friend of ours made a really good example. They cover fruit salads and mayonnaise, some sweet mayonnaise for some reason. And you, when They I, put ketchup on Subway sandwiches. Yeah, when, when you first look at it, like in a photo, it's like, oh, maybe it's like a nice glaze or a frosting or condensed, who knows? But it's mayonnaise, and that's something that does not sound good, but Chinese people love it. So again, just stay away. If you're in a restaurant that's a certain cuisine, stick to that cuisine. Don't wander to the back of the menu because uh, you probably won't be too happy. Even the normal run-of-the-mill restaurants like a McDonald's will have very, very Chinese options, and just stay away from those. Yeah. You won't be happy. McDonald's, get a Big Mac, don't get the rice dish. Eating is one of the most difficult things for visitors to do here in China, um, simply because you cannot communicate, so if the... There are no pictures on the menu can make it difficult. So we were talking about earlier, we need to do a post, a little how-to guide for visitors how to eat in China. Yeah, and oh, this is real quick, just to think what he said on the menu. When you're looking at a menu, you line up the Chinese to the number, not the English, because it goes Chinese and then it will go the English. A lot of people make that mistake, think it goes English and Chinese, and they get a whole bunch of things they didn't think they ordered, but it's because, <laughs> again, they thought the English came first. All right, guys. I think that's it for us yeah, for today. Those are just those three real quick tips for anybody traveling, visiting China, uh, whether you're doing business here or on vacation. Really listen to these. Everybody gets burned on them when they visit, so hopefully now you will. If you're doing business in China, um, check out our inner circle. It's the best resource for doing business here. Definitely. Cheers, everyone.